Thank you for joining us again in our Universal Literary Canon series, our Universal Canon of Literature. Here at UCLA, off and on for the next two weeks, we shall be concentrating on the great Jewish works. And now I conclude our medieval section with a brief synopsis of the life of Yehuda Halevi, or Judah ben Samuel Halevi, Yehuda ben Shmuel Halevi in Hebrew. Halevi lived from 1086 to 1141. He's considered perhaps the greatest devotional poet of the Middle Ages. He was born in Toledo, Spain in 1086 and died reputedly under the hooves of an Arab's horse before the walls of his beloved Jerusalem in 1141. He wrote light lyrics on love, peans to his maker. Now, what are peans? The peans are high notes of praise. It is a poem of adoration, adulation, and praise. In classical Greek mythology, or in the classical Greek and later Hellenistic Greek period, it was a type of poem in praise of one of the gods. But today, a paean is just means, and that's spelled P-A-E-A-N, is just a poem of high praise. We have Yahud HaLevi here, not praising one of the Greek gods, but the God of Israel. That's what he means by peans to his maker. And above all, passionate expressions of Israel's devotion to the Holy Land. You have to understand, this book was written before the book from which I'm quoting, that by <clears throat> the general editor of the Thesaurus of Book Digest, Chaim Haydn, was writing before the foundation of the modern state of Israel. So he refers to it as the Holy Land. More than 300 of Halevi's poems have been incorporated in the Hebrew books of prayer. In his day, Christians and Muslims were engaged in a struggle for the mastery of Spain, with the Jews expecting only to be ground down by both sides. The Crusades seemed the final assurance of Israel's doom. It was the love and optimism of Judah's verses that sustained the waning spirit of his people. Um, Israel, the people of Israel. Many of his poems have been translated by Heine, Zangville, and other writers in various tongues. Interestingly enough, Heine was considered the national poet of Germany in the days immediately after Napoleon. The versatile poet earned his livelihood as a physician, as did many of the medieval Jewish rabbis especially those of note. But he was renowned for his Talmudic and general learning and for a notable philosophic and theological work called Kitab al-Khazari in Arab, Arabic <clears throat> and Ha-Khazari in Hebrew. This treatise in five dialogues is framed in the dramatic story of the king of the Khazars, who after long deliberation became a convert to Judaism. Though it contains much abstruse Abstruse means beyond the ordinary, too theoretical, and technical material. It is essentially poetic in its effort to prove that Israel is the heart of humanity. Judaism is favorably contrasted with Christianity and Islam. <clears throat> this book, which is to be found today in complete English translation, has taken its place among the contributions to medieval philosophy but the author is best remembered as the greatest Hebrew poet following the prophets and singers of the Old Testament, which today, of course, we prefer to refer to as the Hebrew Bible. So what have we learned from this? The Yehuda HaLevi was, number one, perhaps the greatest devotional poet within the entire gamut of our Jewish experience. Number two, he was, his works were praised as much as he praised God through his works. And number three, 
he wrote a treatise which would advance the late 19th century theory that we Jews came from the Khanate or the Khazars. That is mainly us Ashkenazi Jews, which is untrue. Modern-day DNA testing has proved that all Jews hail not from Central Asia, but originally from the Middle East, or as the British would say, the Near East, the ancient Middle East. Specifically, if you were to narrow the address down to the modern state of Iraq. This poet, whose writings and poems are still so highly prized, that we even read Al-Khazari in Kolel, advanced yeshiva, he's so highly prized. especially in the wake of the foundation of the State of Israel, when we learn that this man laid down his life for his love of Jerusalem. Legend has it that he was killed outside the Wailing Wall. He literally had fallen under the hooves of, um, of a Muslim horseman, not, not, to pick a, not to pick on the Muslims. Muslims are good people. Jewish, Christian, Muslims, all part of the Abraham.